Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we have another gun gripe episode for you. And yeah, you guessed it. We are continuing down the rabbit hole, if you will. And today, we're going to be talking about, okay, are revolvers useless, all right, for personal protection? Now, we've done a couple of videos that sort of pose these questions, if you will, uh, in the past. One we did was, uh, it was called, Are Combat Shotguns Worthless? And then we did another episode called RPCCs Worthless. Now, obviously, we break these things down in a really fair way. Like, we're not going to throw anybody under the bus, but the point is to kind of talk about the pros and cons of, let's just say, wheel guns versus an auto loader. And we're going to kind of talk about those things a bit and answer the question, are revolvers useless for concealed carry for personal protection? Obviously, we know the answer is, I mean, no, they're not useless, but let's break this down a little bit and we'll have some fun. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute. If you are looking for a career in the gun world and you're into gunsmithing and tinkering with your own guns and things like that, and reloading your own ammunition, maybe you want to learn how to fly drones, they have so many awesome distance learning programs. They're a wonderful group of people. Check them out, SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. You will absolutely love working with these folks if you decide to get some higher education in regards to things that we're into, like guns and gunsmithing and reloading and things. So check them out, SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute, and tell them we sent you. And a big thanks to them for being a patron of our channel. So you know we're going to ruffle some feathers here, man. I mean, like, you can't make this video and not piss someone off. On either side. On either side. Yeah. You got the revolver crowd. They've got their, like, you know, cult kind of group going on. And then you've got the crowd that hates revolvers and thinks they're totally worthless mm -hmm. and just antiquated and they're old people guns, you know? Yep. I mean, and that's what got happens. And you the crowd of people who says that only a 10 millimeter 1911 will do. Oh, no. And just, everything else. No, not even a 10 millimeter 1911, <laughs> just a 1911 in yeah, but general. But you do have that 10 millimeter crowd that's like, they're all about the 10s. I know. Oh, no. I mean, look, 10 millimeter is a great cartridge. You can't deny. So we need to do a video on breaking down all the different like cult like the cults within the gun world. That the would Glock be cult, The Glock oh, yeah. fanboy cult. Idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it on the list. That will be a future video, ladies um, and gentlemen. But <laughs> no, revolvers are certainly not useless. Um, you know, back in the day, I mean, revolvers were kind of the, the handgun, handgun of choice for a lot of military, obviously. And then like going into the like 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even early 80s, you know, they were still riding on the hips of law enforcement all across the country and revolvers had their place. Now, like the cartridges that revolvers shoot are immensely more powerful in most cases than your typical handgun ammunition these days, like your nine millimeters, sometimes like your 40s, even your 45s. I mean, 357 mag, 44 mag, very powerful cartridges, you know, and it's only gotten better with time. You can't really... With, with a few exceptions, you can't really stuff you know, a Magnum cartridge in a typical and, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Commonly available. Like a practical. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry, my brain is, like, working at, like, half speed. But you can't put a Magnum cartridge in a practical size handgun. Now, like, Desert Eagle? Yeah, but, I mean, you're talking, like, a five-pound gun. That is not practical. But, like, revolvers certainly can deliver a lot of power, um, you know, out of a common common size that's comparable to a full-size, like, semi-auto handgun, right? Sure. So that's one thing, for sure. So I think we're, you know, there's a lot of disconnect, okay, with revolvers, is that, you know, revolvers do require a considerable amount of training to operate, you know, let's just say very efficiently in a stressful situation. I mean, you look at guys like Jerry Mitchell, like I know we always go back to Jerry, but Jerry is very fast on the trigger. He is very fast with a double action revolver, and he's also lightning fast on the reloads. Mm -hmm. Three skill sets that are incredibly important for operating a wheel gun. And if anybody wants to see the proper way to run a wheel gun, you have to look at Jerry Mitzlick shooting. Um, also, if you look at you know the old school techs uh, from Ed McGivern, and you've got guys uh, like, um, oh boy, um, what's his name? The guy that worked for Springfield, uh, invented the, the 44 Magnum... Uh, what was his name? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, 
I'm drawing a blank. Elmer. Elmer Keith. Elmer Keith. I'm sorry. How could I forget Elmer Keith? But there's so many great wheel gun aficionados in the history of wheel gun shooting. And Jerry is a living legend in that regard. So if you haven't checked out his content, check out his channel. Big shout out to Jerry. But the point is, you look at guys like Ed and Elmer Keith, and guys like Jerry, they show you exactly you know, the ins and outs of running a wheel gun with a lot of precision. Um, wheel guns are generally a lot easier to, to get the basics of right out the gate, though, which is kind of nice. Um, many would argue that wheel guns, a lot less can go wrong. It's not to say that nothing can go wrong. I did a video sometime back where I asked the question, hey, do revolvers jam? And I went over all of these specifics, so we're not going to cover them in today's gun gripe, but let's just say that, generally speaking, um, it's rare to find a malfunction in a revolver unless something, you know, when, when they do malfunction, they malfunction. Mm -hmm. But generally, though, they're kind of like the pickup truck of guns. Like, they're always going to work. Fixed barrel, very accurate, good triggers, especially in single action. And, of course, um, like the one Smith that you've got there, it's got, uh, well, both of those Smiths there uh, that you've got on your end of the table have excellent double actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you can you can yeah. respring revolvers to kind of you know tweak the the double action and the single action trigger pull. Uh, you can stone the hammer and sear engagement um, to a certain degree. You can do a lot of playing around to get these things running exceptionally well. Uh, you still are limited on capacity. That's one of the biggest complaints with revolvers, right? And they're hard to reload. They're hard to reload. They're not they're not as quick as dropping a mag and putting a fresh magazine in like an auto loader. And I mean that's just coming from like like a self-defense mindset, you know, that sort of category. But um, concealability, I mean, revolvers are easily concealed. Most of them are a little bit heavier than their semi-auto counterparts to a certain degree. Um, but some people just like wheel guns. They like the simplicity yeah. of them. And look, let's face it, um, there's some states in the nation that are not very friendly to guns, and they have very draconian gun laws. And a lot of what's out there that you can procure, especially like New York, where they've got seven-round magazine capacity limits right you got you're limited to like 1911s and revolvers and then neutered magazines in glocks or whatever else might be available sure so i mean that's frustrating that's very frustrating but i think i'd rather carry a more powerful cartridge if i was in one of those states in yeah. something you know like yeah, would you like, rather have a handgun with eight rounds in it or would you rather have a revolver with six and know that you've got more power personally yeah. i in that situation if i was forced to deal yeah. with it in that way i'd probably rather have the revolver now that's one thing i want to mention too is power okay mm. when we talk about power okay you mentioned 357 earlier the 38 that you just had pull that 38 back out i know you have it on your end of the table so notice the porting so not only is this a short barrel on this particular gun but that's also fully ported now, that's cool. Yeah, it helps with the recoil a bit. But honestly, though, you are losing a lot of velocity. Mm -hmm. So in order to get to realize the full potential out of a revolver cartridge, you do kind of have to have, you know, a decent length barrel. At least four inches, you know. At least four inches. So At least four inches. At least four inches. Don't, don't go. Now, there. if... Now, look. Bye. Eight and three quarter. That's where you really get into the, into the business, okay? getting stuff done, getting to the bottom of things, if you know what I mean. But anyway, the point is, Lord, I digress. The point is, though, is that if the barrel gets too short, you're going to lose a lot of velocity, mm -hmm. you're going to lose a lot of power, and you're almost kind of defeating the purpose of having the higher power cartridge in the beginning. In fact, at my dinner table one evening, I was feeding Tim Harmson, Military Arms Channel. We were eating steaks, and I broke out one of my favorite little Smiths. And I forget the model, because I forget the model names, but... It's it's a it was one it's I think it's a either a J or K frame three fifty seven magnum right and it's one of those like kind of hammerless ones it's, well it does have the hammer but it's like that recessed hammer and it's got like a little two and a half inch barrel and I was telling him hey I really love this gun and explain to it and I remember Tim kind of busting my bubble a little bit and he's like well but the problem is with that short barrel. Yeah, you could shoot some full bore 357 Magnum ammo out of it, but now you're only getting like nine millimeter power. And I thought about it. I'm like, dude, once you get under a certain barrel length, you're losing a lot of potential mm. what that gun can really do. So the argument would be that while that J frame is concealable, and while it's a fantastic gun, and while it's accurate, and while, you know, if a baddie is right on top of me or in very close vicinity, I would feel very adequate, uh, quite adequately armed and have the ability to end the threat. Um, 
you kind of lose the charm of the concealability once you put the barrel length in there that is long enough to actually do some real work with it at distance. I think that's kind of the takeaway. It Wouldn't is. you agree? I would. So Four it, from, inches from is a, kind of the minimal. Yeah, for barrel. self self defense uh cat or a self defense scenario, yes. I mean, that would be the case. I mean, most people think about comparing revolvers to auto loaders in like self defense scenarios. That's the first thing that comes but to you mind. You really have to though. Yeah, you do. Because it's power to power. It's it apples is. to apples. You're just so, you're literally comparing the the gun's ability to launch a projectile and ener mm -hmm. you know energize projectile yeah. at a certain velocity and to perform a certain terminal effect. Yeah. So, so speaking of terminal effect, on the sure. other side of the, the the coin, you have like all right, revolvers' usefulness in hunting scenarios. I think a revolver in a hunting scenario is way more useful and way more capable than uh, comparable auto loaders. Um, mm -hmm. Other other than a few specialized things like yeah, say maybe like a long slide 10 millimeter Glock or something e well look, even at that point there's still revolvers that trumpet i mean like this 500 that's on the table i mean this this is still kind of a project in the works but this is you know a 10 and a half inch barrel 500 with you know porting up front you know muzzle brake this is a five shot uh big heavy revolver rail you put a scope on it all right now we've got another one of these x frames in 460 that you know killed deer with last year and how far was that shot 91 yards and which so, bullet did you use for that I, well i used a hornady a 200 grain ftx which didn't really perform to my liking uh but the the barns and some of the other projectiles that i wanted to try are literally on perpetual back order hey That's, barns if you're listening please stock some dang projectiles like but i, lo I love the projectiles for hand loading but you yeah. can't freaking get them like what do y'all do? Make some projectiles. But um, and respond to your messages, please. <laughs> We're trying to find projectiles. But Hello, like, holler at me. Look, the five hundred. <laughs> I, I love them, by the way. Yeah, five hundred Smith and Wesson is a venerable cartridge, and even in a ten and a half inch barrel, I mean, you still cut a ton of power. Now, like for hunting, I'd say longer barrels the better, and you get a little bit more stability with these big revolvers. I mean, there's guys that even put bipods on the front of them and stuff. I mean, it's literally a hand cannon, but. You know, when I was doing the initial testing with the 460, you know, I'm launching that bullet at like 2,100 plus feet per second, 200 gram pill, and that's giving me a substantial amount of energy over a comparable mm -hmm. like 10 millimeter, for example. Like, yeah, and, you, what, and what are our 180 10 millimeter pills getting you in might, like a six inch? You, you might know, get six to 800 foot pounds depending on the cartridge. Which is still no yeah. slouch, but is that to say yeah. that a Glock long slide 10 yeah. millimeter is going to give you? that kind of power at 100 yards no I just don't think no way the answer is so, definitely no and like with these higher uh, performance revolver cartridges the 460 is touted as like the world's fastest revolver cartridge you know production cartridge anyways um but i did a point blank zero on that thing and my long zero range is like 214 yards and i sat at the farm and i shot a group the size of like my fist out of this thing with that ammo at like 214 yards off a hog I saddle. I can't believe that you hold a gun that still. Like it takes a lot of precision to shoot a gun like that <laughs> Look, that far. It, now I will say that too. These revolvers, I mentioned in the hunting video that we did, but they require a very fine touch and you absolutely have to let the gun surprise you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were at hunting camp recently and Matt had his seven and a half inch 44, which that thing is a powerhouse, right? I mean, you're Great getting, gun. That's a perfect barrel length. It is. Gun, you're you're way. getting over a thousand foot pounds of energy out of those, you know, the oh, cartridges that we're using. Easily. But like Matt missed a deer when he was in the stand, and he said, "Man, I got to check this thing because I got to make sure it's still zeroed." And I was like, "Well, I'll shoot it for you real quick because I mean, I zeroed it, and then you can shoot it and see." I mean, I took it at fifty yards and I put it exactly where I was looking from the hog saddle. Yeah. And then we looked in the cylinder and I said, "Wait a minute, what ammo were you shooting?" Because it was Remington and federal in there both 240s uh -oh. and he said well i don't know it may have been like a remington i was shooting i think i zeroed it for the other i'm like well let me shoot one of the federals same hole at 50 yards yeah off the hog saddle and matt was like dang it all right i just literally like pulled the shot and missed that deer and it you happens know? it does you happen excited, you know but for for that particular scenario revolvers in my opinion completely trump auto loaders unless you're like unless you're in a situation where you're going in and hunting hogs or something and you've got a whole sounder of hogs running after you like that one video has been floating around the internet mm -hmm. like why do you need 30 round mags well so i think 
it's important to maybe consider that if we're comparing a J-frame with a little short barrel, the 38 Special, to a 9mm, and let's say both the guns are similar in overall size, profile, concealability, weight, things like that, I would say that I'd probably most certainly prefer the auto loader just for the ease of, you know, easily changing mags and reloading. I can reload faster. I have faster follow-up shots, right? Um, the accuracy at typical self-defense ranges is going to still be pretty stellar with most handguns, uh, whereby, you know, look, revolvers are wonderfully accurate. And that's one thing I like about revolvers. They do have the fixed barrel, so really accurate. And whenever I want to see how well my shooting skills are holding up, I grab my Model 10 mm -hmm. and I break it out and I and I take 158 grain wad cutters and I shoot bottle caps at 25 yards. That's how I practice to you know for my single action work. Or I'll take my CZ uh, Shadow 2 and I'll do the same thing. I'll put bottle caps up because you know we blow up a lot of sodas. I'll look around the range and find bottle cap lids and and if I can consistently shoot bottle cap lids at 25 yards, think you know safe to say my single action uh, game. Is looking pretty good now not every handgun is, is gonna be quite that accurate I know when Chad and I did the video on the mark 23 the H&K now now that thing gosh that is one accurate auto loader now uh, of course that's a humongous gun that's not really practical for you know concealed carry everyday carry purposes however uh, Wow, what a shooting experience. It's still in the Lord's caliber. Dude. 45 ACP, What a man. shooting experience. That was like one of the best shooting autoloaders I think I've ever shot. Like, And that Salient. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the folks from Salient um, you know, visit us one time, and they brought out um, a couple of their M&Ps that were fully customized. And, they, and we had a Salient M&P, and it was an amazing shooting experience. That was one sweet MMP. I'm serious. Like one of the best shooting auto loader polymer frame striker fire guns I think I've ever put my hands on. I still need to send the gun over to them to have the work done on. Now, speaking of custom MMPs, you do have my shield over there. Uh, now, that's one that the kind folks at Robar did. And unfortunately, they're no longer in business. But Robar, um, you know, they, they did some fine work. And so that, that's a, a full Robar custom there. Yeah. So, um, similar sized, right? to the J frame here but more capacity similar power between the two which one's more practical for better self sites. defense scenario better sights for sure uh definitely auto loaders just like you mentioned i would um, say better trigger better trigger uh yeah i mean as far as like Rapid wrapping fire. shots out yeah. yes better trigger on auto i love the trigger sure. bow the aftermarket trigger <laughs> bow they put in that gun um but uh, the the folks that are doing the Robar type treatments now, I believe it's uh, Suarez Tactical. Suarez Tactical. Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure that's the name of the company. All right. um, do, do those guys do those shotgun packages too? Don't they? Um, Doesn't Suarez do those really nice like 590 packages? I'm not certain. Uh, they they might. We I've never have really a few had of anything those like police, that done. Uh, shotguns left over. I might want I want to send them one of our 14 inches and have a whole package done okay. on that. I'm sure we could do that. We have a few um, left. We should do that. So, like, just my personal opinion, a similarly sized uh, compact revolver versus an auto loader for, you know, a similarly sized auto loader um, for self defense purposes, I'm going to go with an auto loader all day long. Especially, yeah. I mean, look, we don't have draconian laws in Georgia right now, anyways. Hopefully, we won't ever. But, you know, we can run full capacity magazines, standard capacity magazines mm -hmm. in, in our handguns. And we can conceal carry. We have constitutional carry here now. So the, the, the gates are open for, you know, uh, a citizen to defend themselves with whatever they so choose. You want to run a revolver, that's what you're comfortable with, go ahead, by all means. But personally, in that in that category, I like uh, auto loaders. Now, on the hunting perspective, I obviously got into the revolver hunting, and I absolutely love it it's a challenge there's just so much energy that you can deliver i mean that 460 delivers over 2,000 foot pounds of energy you know at the muzzle and yeah. like 100 yards i'm still i'm still well above a thousand foot pounds at 100 yards and even getting close to it at about 200 
I will so. say that I was not terribly impressed with the performance of that projectile. No, that's the the, the main Achilles heel is. But it wasn't the cartridge no. or the gun or your it's, shooting. It's the you, had, you made a perfect shot. It's just that particular projectile. No. I just don't believe is well suited and, for that purpose. And look, the the internet, as we mentioned before, the internet did say that the experience with that particular projectile in the 460 was not a very good one. Um, it just. I don't know if it it's just not can't. a dig on Hornady. Look, no. Hornady makes awesome stuff. I mean, I've killed so many animals with Hornady bullets. I'm not. I'm not taking a dump on Hornady. It's common knowledge at this point with that well, particular cartridge. One thing I want to mention too about wheel guns is that don't overlook a wheel gun as an angle gun, right? Because think about mm-hmm. it. Some moron tries to you know knock you over and get on top of you and punch you or hit you or something what's your what's your one of your actions going to be to put your legs up and stop them try to kick them off of you right or like if you're down on your back you know having the ability to reach up and grab a gun a holdout gun from your ankle and put it right in their freaking sternum now it doesn't matter how much power you got when it's point blank right or to the dome or under the chin or in the sternum okay mm-hmm. and you know, I never really thought about that too much until I heard Clint Smith talk about it. And he's like, yeah, you should just, you should have an ankle gun. And he explained it. And I thought, you know what? It's pretty wise. I never really thought about it like that. I'm surprised so he doesn't carry a you shotgun. You can have an autoloader as your main gun, but what if your autoloader gets knocked out of your hand? Or what if you're in an odd position on the ground and you can't get to it? Sometimes having that holdout gun is kind of nice too. Or All maybe right. you're in, in a nice dress pants. Hmm? You may not be able to wear a gun on your hip. Maybe you're in a work environment. So having a gun on your ankles better than nothing. Well, look, I'm gonna be especially devils. a scandium frame like yeah. one of those really light air weights. It kind of uh. disappears. You won't even know you have it. Well, you'll you'll know you have it when you shoot it. Well, when Let's you shoot it. Let's put that way. All right. But so it it's won't my, be so heavy that it gets in your way. Right, it's my turn to play devil's advocate. All right. Sure. These days, there are many options for firearms that fit into that backup gun category that are immensely more useful than a revolver on your ankle. I mean, sure. even when like the um, the Glock 42 came out, you know that's tiny. But now you've got 365s. You've got some of the other like double stack, super compact nine millimeter options that aren't really much bigger than a compact revolver. And you've got what three times the rounds? I mean, 15 shot mags opposed to five. Well, you also so. have to think about Clint's generation. I mean, well, like, I know, I know, I know. You know. It, it, They've got a million wheel guns laying around. I mean, th- think about it, you know? I know. I mean, hell, even our generation. I mean, think about how many wheel guns I own. I have probably almost as many revolvers as I do auto loaders. Now, I will say that. But I grew up shooting revolvers a lot. So. I, I have carried. Clinton's generation yeah. did, you know? Now, I have carried one revolver. I've carried J-frame, you know, five shot with the laser grips on them um, in the past. But I haven't carried that gun on my person in a very long time. I've just swapped over completely. We need to get Clint on the channel. We, oh, we yeah. drop his name enough. Look, I, I'm not trying to name drop. Look, I, I've talked to Heidi and I've talked to Clint. Like, we, we've thrown around the idea of doing some collabs. So, I promise I'm going to reach out to Clint and we'll have him as a guest on the channel soon. Right. I hope. So, so look, we'll, we'll um, get there. Don't Clint worry. Smith on Iraq Veteran. Just buy a shotgun. Yeah. You got to pick him up with a bucket. Yeah. Pick him up. <laughs> we got to be scooping him in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Take him outside. <laughs> Put him in the coroner's bag. Like, Clint, uh, <laughs> so why should you own a shotgun, man? Like, well, let me tell you about it. <laughs> I mean, like the clanisms. Oh, it's boy. just great. Here we go. But yes, revolvers are immensely useful. I they are. Say, so. They are. You know, don't overlook revolvers. You know, another thing about auto loaders, a point of contention is probably worth mentioning too, is that, you know, once you get into auto loaders, it's probably just worth mentioning that, you know, it they do require a little bit more nuance and time to really learn your way around each one. Like, Every gun might be a little bit different in the controls. Overall, they all kind of operate very similar. Um, but generally speaking, though, you know, you're going to want to probably spend a little bit more time, especially if you're, excuse me, the coffee talking. If you're new to guns, it's probably worth taking a little bit more time to learn properly how to, you know, you have to know how to load your magazines properly. You got to understand there's a magazine release and pull the magazine in and out, load and show clear, lock and slide to the rear. There, there's a lot more little kind of nuances in terms of the operation uh, to use the gun versus a revolver is a pretty simple arrangement overall. Someone can be trained on the basic functions of a, a revolver much easier than, a, than an auto loader. 
Although an autoloader does offer a lot of advantages, which we've clearly discussed here in this video, just understand that from a everyday use and functionality and just getting out on the range and, and using the gun and especially assessing problems, right? Clearing stoppages, changing magazines, Every, all of those things in regards to an autoloader. Just understand that, you know, you're going to need to put in the work with either platform to make sure that you understand you don't want the gun to be a liability. What if you have an issue or a stoppage or a problem and you can't correct it and now some dirt bag greases you because you didn't know how to correct the issue or you didn't have a backup gun or something? Like two is one, one is none. I hey, mean, look, I, on that point, always you know, carry an extra gun. Look, on that point, if the revolver jams, it's heavy enough, you just throw it. Right? Well, I don't know what kind of revolvers you carry. Well, look, I mean, at that point, it's like, you know, it's like, man, do I really want to scratch up my Smith or do I want to live? I'll throw that thing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> on your grave, it says, <laughs> he didn't want to scratch his Smith. <laughs> like oh, my $900 no. scandium frame gun. It's like, no, man. Bury me with no, my scandium no, frame. No, you, no, you can't. Revolver. No, you can't throw a scandium frame. The thing will float away, man. That's right. No, It'll you, just float off in uh, outer dude, space. Yeah, like. It defies gravity, you know? You got to you know, throw an all, so that, that all e steel. That E-Series 1911 that I have, the Scandium frame one. So Scandium, so just to give you an idea, like Here we go. Scandium as an alloy, it's like, it's kind of, it's it's a miracle alloy. And I'm not going to go into like a bunch of nerdy details, and I'm not going to claim to know all these things, but it's lighter than aluminum, but it's supposed, it's touted as being like just as strong as any, you know, any metal frame, you know. Uh, I was talking to one of the engineers at Smith & Wesson at SHOT Show one time, all right? And uh, remember we had the Smith & Wesson, not the 296, that was the, the 44 Special, but the 329 PD or whatever that gun was. So that thing was awful. They had a yeah. Scandium frame 44 Magnum, uh, and we're talking a 44 Magnum with, I think it had a, either a five or six inch barrel, you know? No, it was a four inch was barrel. Was it a four inch yeah, barrel? it was a four inch barrel. A four inch 44 Magnum Scandium frame, and that gun, how much did it weigh, Chad? Like, 20 some odd ounces yeah it weighed and, <laughs> very much very much the same as a, like a glock 17 yeah and you're shooting full power 44 magnum ammo through that sucker and that little light gun and it's like there's some things that just make sense and there's some things that don't and i asked the engineer at smith and wesson i was like why hey <laughs> come here you look like a <laughs> smart fella like you one of the engineers oh why yes i am and you know you can always tell because they're like the ones that don't want to talk to anybody i get mm -hmm. it look hey i understand engineers don't want to talk to people i get it they want to talk to listen, machines listen i'm your advocate okay you go to shot show you don't want to be in the booth you want to be back engineering things you want to be behind a desk i get it you don't want to be talking to those pesky people i understand engineers aren't people people hey look you you did talk to that guy on a friday i did yeah you know, so. but anyway pulled the fellow aside i'm like hey Come here. Like, all right, tell me. The scanning frame. How long before it blows up? Oh, we swear, man. Like, we've tested. Like, you can load it however you want. Is like, as much as your hand can handle, that gun can handle. Interesting. But I promise you, after two cylinders, you're going to want to go see a chiropractor. Like, it, it sucks to shoot. So, that gun upset my carpal tunnel. Let's just put it that Let's way. Let's just say I got rid of it. Yeah. I don't get rid of many guns. But that gun, I was like, dude, Look, there are some things you just shouldn't do. I don't like shooting those little stubby, like, 460s. They're they're highly unpleasant, even though they're, like, bricks, you know? Yeah. Or even, really, the 500s that are braked, that, are, that mm -hmm. have the muzzle brake on them. I mean, they're okay, but, dude, that gun was unpleasant to shoot. Smith & Wesson, if you're listening. Highly unpleasant. If you're listening, please, please, with sugar on top, bring back the Scandium Frame Model 296 and 44 Special. Mm -hmm. I buy that for a dollar. Hey, but then, hey, look, dude. Look, dude. All right. All right, let me tell you this. Why don't you just carry 1911? Oh, my gosh. Here ah, we go. Ah, ah, eh, ah, eh, ah, eh. Here we go. No, but, but look, look. The truth of the matter is that if I was going to carry a wheel gun, the 296 would be my choice. Mm -hmm. 44 Special, light, Mm -hmm. Still powerful, still enough barrel length to matter, mm -hmm. and it's not gonna like you know they don't kick that bad. Mm -hmm. It's not like shooting that what, 329 PD or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah, but anyway, I digress. They they do have some alloys they make these wheel guns out of that can get the weight exceptionally light. Hey, which is nice. You know how they get uh, auto loaders real light? 
polymer. They use the polymer construction. Advanced polymer. Advanced polymer construction. Mm. What would John Browning do if he had access to polymer? He would have done a lot. He probably would have done some things that, that would, would probably blow your mind. Probably know, he, things we haven't even thought of yet. Either that or he would have said, mm -mm. metal. Yeah. Metal. Probably he probably would he probably scoff at the idea. Steel. Pretty cool. Yes. We right. haven't shown off all the guns though, have we? Mm. You didn't show off that uh that what, the, uh, cheetah? the night guard, the thirty eight. Oh, this Showing is that. the the So 67? there are some wheel guns, y'all, that are, are kind of like tailored for um uh, self defense. All right. So this one that he has here, it's got night sights, mm -hmm. supported barrel, it's had an action job. Um it's got the, you know, kind of blacked out finish. So that is actually a wheel gun that is set up more for, more for carry. Yeah, this this is a like carry. I think they call that gun the Night Guard. They haven't made that gun in a long time. I don't, I don't recall. I don't think they make um, it anymore. Let's see, it's a Performance Center sixty seven, but I don't recall like what it may have been. But um, what a gun! Wow. We still need so to good. do that video where we double fist these because I have one the exact same gun. We have the gun. exact same gun, don't yeah. we? Um, but yeah, night sights. Uh, Mm. It's, uh, what it's a gun. 38 special plus P. So, you mm -hmm. know, you're getting a little bit above like 9 millimeter power, you know, there. So, that's a great right. gun. It is a fantastic gun. Um, but like <sighs> carrying something like this, not practical. It's just not practical for me personally. Um, but like <sighs> there are a lot of revolvers out there that are set up more for carry with the hammerless setups where the double action only. But mm -hmm. it kind of takes the charm away from a revolver being able to, you know, put it in single action um, mode. I mean, with a little bitty stubby barrel. I mean, I mm -hmm. remember when Jerry and I were doing, uh, we were shooting at that 18 by 24 gong at, mm -hmm. what was it, 200 yards? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I ever hit it? I think so. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hang on a second. Now, are we talking about a piece of footage that hasn't been released on YouTube? Of me shooting Jerry's J frame upside down, nothing but net, and hitting an 18 by 24 at 200 yards. We're going to find that footage. It may have been further than that. I can't remember. There was one was like. It? Was it the Makarov you took a shot at 600 yards with just off the cuff and you hit it like. On the third try? Yeah. It was like. Are we filming that? I don't remember. I digress. I don't remember. Look for that footage. Here. All right. So, you know, that'll, so be, that'll be an all night. It was, it was, well, it was when Jerry and I were, we were filming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we had them down and we were trying to do this, this kind of concept and we were having such difficulty connecting. And I don't think Jerry ever connected, but I did. And Jerry's I, like, I don't know. <laughs> now look. He's like, like, like you're not going to post that, are you? He's like, you're not going to post that, are you? No, we're not. <laughs> but it's just like, Jerry's awesome, man. He's so fun to hang out with, man. Those of you uh, lucky few that are still here, yeah. Don't you be going on the forums now and talking about this and getting old Jerry wise to what we're thinking about. He might, he might look. Jerry's not the guy you want to cross. He's gonna come over here and he's gonna put six rounds in me and then six rounds in Eric and one point nine Before nine the first seconds. Drop of blood hits the floor. <laughs> Now, that was, or, no, what'll happen is you'll just see a you'll see a towering figure in the doorway and you're like you know be like middle of the night you're halfway away you're like, looking like what the heck <laughs> and it's freaking Jerry with that CQB Barrett <laughs> like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I mean like what the hell the only thing you hear is hi up <laughs> beep <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the last thing you'll ever hear is well, that, that shot timer. Look, I was going to mention, but like Jerry is definitely the exception and not the rule when it mm -hmm. comes to revolver handling. And that world record that he said, actually multiple records, like one was eight shots, you know, in, I don't remember, like 1.3 seconds or something ridiculous. Maybe even quicker than that. I can't remember. And accurate but, too. Yeah. But the other one, like he, he hit multiple targets, like two rounds on four targets in a certain amount of time. But like the one that, the one that's always crazy to me, it's like, dude, I mean, it's superhuman. Six shot revolver, six shots reloaded from a speed loader, six more shots in under two seconds. I mean there I don't think anybody's ever gonna beat that, that record. That that NRA dude sitting at that table with that calculator, he was like <laughs> It took him a minute. Like <laughs> 
1.99. Woo! Like, man. You know, that shot is like, when you think about, imagine how Jerry felt in that moment. Like, I've talked to him about this, and, and even Jerry's probably, you know, as I recall, I think Jerry was kind of like, like, I surprised myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, sometimes it's like when you're, when you're on, when that dog is on and that dog's ready to hunt, that dog's going to hunt. And he and Jerry was hunting that day. Wow. Mm-hmm. But anyway, there's one more gun on the table. Show the me All right. So, yep. Yeah, you got a 380 single stack, which honestly, like the snubby, like 38s that are ported, probably giving you like 380 power. Yeah. You know, but I mean, this is kind of like uh, just a nice single action um, Beretta Cheetah. And like this one is. Magazine disconnect safety. I always forget about the magazine disconnect safety. Yeah, I'm not a fan. You ain't got one of those in revolvers. True. You know. Um, but these are fantastic little guns. I mean, just a typical Beretta action, just a smaller profile than like an M9 or a 92. Sure. A um, little underpowered. Uh, I mean, a little bit, but a slim gun overall, slimmer than, you know, uh, this five-shot, you know, Smith here. Show a comparison um, to the J-frame. Let's show the size, the size comparison. Now, the cheetah is a little bit larger, so beep. So a little bit, hmm. a little teeny tiny bit. bit. That's Brandy's gun there. So the cheetah, mm-hmm. the cheetah. That's an awesome pistol. Well, you don't think Brandy can handle the you know big boy revolvers and big boy calibers? Got to give her a gun. little three eighty. Like, what? She likes that gun. She shoots it well. You want to stand in front of her when she's hey, got? It? No, I want to stand in front of her. <laughs> the holes in me. Shoot. Oh man. But I mean That's a great pistol. Single stack, and this is what, eight shot mag? Yeah. Thirty eight. And I think they they still do some runs of that gun in thirty two ACP. Oh, thirty two as well. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Now you're really talking about getting like in underpowered range. Ooh, pip squeak. Man, when you 32s. shoot it, it goes. <laughs> like, hey man, what what'd you shoot me with? Uh, twenty two? <laughs> Bounces off. Oh man, that's thirty two. Oh shoot. <laughs> like um, a twenty five automatic. Like, oh. No, it it's still something put a, bit me. <laughs> it still put a hole in you. Um right. but like <laughs> even even this beretta, like some of the more modern double stacks are smaller than this thing. And the nine millimeter, man. You know, like I love berettas. I, they're just timeless, classic guns. They but are. like from a practicality standpoint, like, I don't know. One thing I do like about that gun is, you know, it's got great sights. It's got a great trigger. It's accurate. So I think there's something to be said about accuracy. Let's talk about that just briefly, like in a nutshell, a tiny itty bitty, like, like a, like a, a little acorn shell. We're talking tiny... accuracy or are we talking precision? Accuracy and precision. I mean, look, just the thing is, is a, is, is a firearm does require our input to work, right? I mean, like, you've got to be able to see down the sights. If, if, you know, you've got to be able to squeeze the trigger, control the gun, point the gun, hold the gun. I mean, like, it does require our input. And I think that as, let's just say, a human input interface, if you will, right? Like, you know, the way you hold the gun, the way you, the way the gun presents when you point it, how naturally it presents. I think a lot of those things, the ergonomics and all can can really factor into that and like in the moment of self-defense when you need to use a firearm for that that kind of precious situation that you know i hope none of you ever have to deal with um it's just kind of nice to know that when when a firearm sort of just becomes a an extension of your body and not something you really have to think about and and that's what i love about those berettas it's Mm. like you point it it's just there like that i kind of like does it fit in your hand better paul Harold, yes, this gun fits my hand considerably well. Um, you you mentioned something that made me think Paul's about. Great, by the way, I'm not making fun of him. I love his channel. Great so guy. So you mentioned the sights. Um, I will say that most auto loaders are going to have way better sights from the factory, even than especially compared to that J frame. Yeah, your compact J frame revolvers that are more Show them the way the sights look well, the more suited for. Uh, you know, concealed carry, you usually have like either a fixed or a driftable front sight blade. Um, and that's it. Like you've got no elevation correction or anything at all. You either just have to go out and see where the gun's hitting. And like, look, I'll be honest with you. 
some J frames, you go out and you shoot them and they've just got that fixed blade on the front of them. They might hit like two feet low at like 10 yards or something crazy, but you get up like three yards away Mm -hmm. and it's dead on the money or something just goofy, you know? Um, J frames. Look, I'm not talking crap about Smith. I love Smith and Wessons, but just know this, that they've made a lot of J frame revolvers over the years. Some of them have overclock barrels, Mm -hmm. underclock barrels. Like if you take the barrel and look real close, I'm talking close. Look at it real, real, real close under some good bright light. And every, I'm not saying it happens all the time, but every now and then you may pull a Smith out. It's got a slightly overclock barrel or maybe slightly underclock. And especially at any kind of decent distance, it's going to cause that projectile to hit definitely not where you're looking. Mm-hmm. I remember having this discussion with Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had an old J frame that he, it was perfect. He hand, he hand selected that gun because it shot that exactly the point. And what happened? He lost it. I think he got, got stolen. stolen. Oh gosh, yeah. boy! Imagine stealing from Jerry and getting that was caught. his that was his two hundred yard J frame. Yeah, and like he could hold it, he knew exactly where to hold mm-hmm. it, and it shot and it hit exactly where he wanted it to. The point is, though, when you look at a J frame and you look at that little short barrel, like on that revolver you just showed them, in a close in personal defense situation where you're only shooting seven yards or something it's probably not going to matter in fact you may not even look down the sights you just kind of kind of instinctively shoot in many cases right so we may be arguing semantics at this point but it's just a point to maybe just consider that's all you know i do like the sights on mm-hmm. auto loader so you know what you do what do you do we test it no yeah. you uh put some laser grips on it yeah yeah I mean, look, somebody, some people may not have great eyesight. Mm. Maybe it's dark. You can't see the sights. You don't have night sights or whatever. Just mm. make sure you keep the batteries fresh in them. Yeah. And make sure you zero it. You do have to zero laser grips. It's like you point the laser and the, and the barrel's looking like <laughs> three feet to the right <laughs> or something. You know? I've, I've said it before, but I, I will say, again, that like my wife, my wife shoots a J-frame revolver better than she use, shoots like Glock 43. You know, th- those are the two guns that she likes because they're small. So, but she shoots the J frame, the Model 60, the older, it's the older, like 70s era Model 60 with laser grips on it. Like, yeah. I'm like, you're kind of frightening. You know? Yeah. So, I know, I know Brandy, like, pretty much any gun she gets a hold of, she shoots it pretty well. Mm hmm. Anyway, right. I digress. Look, I know we went into a lot of different rabbit holes here and got into some, let's just say, sentimental discussions, if you will, in- involving some of the things we've been involved with, with the past. I mean, like, talking about some of our experiences with Jerry is always fun. You know, and we haven't filmed with Jerry in a long time. I do want to get Jerry back, and I'm going to reach back out to Heidi because I want to get Clint on the channel. I think that would be, um, maybe we could melt the internet together. Uh, that would be, it's always fun to have a nuclear meltdown on the internet. You get a guy like him and me together, and Chad, I mean, there's no telling what we'll talk about or where the conversation will go, and that's always a good time. So uh, I, I will reach back out. I, I would love to have him as a guest on the channel, and hopefully, you know, we laid this stuff out in a way that makes sense to you guys. I mean, okay, so are revolvers useless? Heck, no, they're not useless. Revolvers are awesome, but just understand that, you know, just like anything, there's always nuance to every uh, they, decision. They, they have their place just like everything else every other tool i agree right now would it be my first choice i think you and i agree the Mm -hmm. answer is probably no Mm -hmm. i think i'd still prefer an auto loader um you know this is the modern world Mm -hmm. not the wild west anymore well if i was shooting (laughs) down the the bat plane maybe maybe a revolver would be a better choice now i must say you got me down this rabbit hole. I'm going to go ahead and just go down. Go ahead. Quick. I'm going to chase a quick rabbit, if you will. Go ahead. Michael Keaton, <laughs> all right, is the best Batman, period. Okay? The first Batman movie is the superior Batman movie. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And Man, I was going to say Val Kilmer, man. Like Val Kilmer was a fairly I'm, decent Batman. No, 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 no. I'm absolutely joking. Val Kilmer was not a bad Batman. But Michael Keaton is the superior Batman. It's a toss-up to me between Michael Keaton and Christian Bale. I think Christian Bale was a pretty formidable Batman. And I must say that, you know, cocaine-era Jack Nicholson (laughs) is the superior Joker. And when Joker pulls out 
that revolver and he wants to shoot down the bat plane, you better recognize you're talking the Joker, okay? And you're talking the Joker that's the 80s cracked out Jack Nicholson Joker. Now look, he now look, Heath Ledger was one heck of a Joker, by far the best Joker. But you can't deny the king. I don't know. Jack Nicholson is the king. I don't think it quite would have been the same if, you know, he pulled out like a P ninety five, like a Ruger P ninety five with like a, you know, thirty inch barrel or something like that on there. I'm gonna tell you. Whoever the prop guy was in that video in that movie and decided <laughs> to do that, props to you. Props to you. That was a fantastic that is the best gag in a movie ever. If you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil it, but go watch the original Batman if you haven't seen it in a while. And just watch Jack Nicholson shoot down the Batplane with a huge ass revolver. I mean, like, how much cooler does it get? You know, it would have been believable with a normal revolver. But we're talking the Joker. <laughs> He's got a long revolver. It's the most Looney Tunes thing ever. I mean, we're talking about velocity. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, he needed all the velocity to get through the bat the bat plane's armor. I'm sure it's armored. The guy's a billionaire. It's not just going to be some plastic bull crap. Nah, I think that powder burn up about halfway down the barrel. Then you're dealing with friction. But you ain't dealing with just any guy. You're dealing with the Joker. He's got some, like, plutonium bullets or something. He's got some special ammo or something. Probably. I mean, like, how do you make a revolver armor piercing? I mean, that bat plane was far away, too. It's just a movie. Well, they but still, uh, it's like I digress, but the point is, like, I mean, that's awesome. They were uh, passing out armor piercing bullets in uh, Lethal Weapon at one point. Were Remember? They? Yeah. Remember they had those cop killers. Oh, you know? and that's what they call. That's yeah. what they called them, you know. And it's like, <laughs> and Danny Glover said, well, "Give me some of these cop killers." And he was putting them in his freaking Smith like nineteen, whatever they were carrying. He was like. Mm-hmm. And he had them in his revolver. Right. Like, I don't know if that's the same cartridge that that revolver takes, Mr. Glover. We are going to compile an entire Here list of movie gags like that and just break them down and talk about them and just have fun with that. Oh That'll be a whole nother video in the future. All right. Thanks so much for watching. That's been our revolvers useless. The answer is heck no, they're not useless. They're awesome. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. I know we went down the rabbit hole, but you know what? Rabbit holes are fun. Sometimes you find a hair at the end. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a awesome new t-shirt. That's one way you can support the channel. Also, throw us a few bucks on Patreon if you're feeling generous. That's one way you can help support our channel directly if you wish to do so. And have yourselves a wonderful day, and thanks for tuning in. And carry a wheel gun and an autoloader. Be a rogue. That's my answer.